Disappointing loss tonight in Boston. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Celtics today. We're recapping game one of the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals where the Miami Heat took game one by a final score of 123 to 116. The Celtics were up nine at halftime. They were up by as many as 12 in the third quarter. They lose this game by seven. Taking a look at the stats here from game one. Assist, 22. Marcus Moore had most of those uh, coming in the first half. He had 10 first half assists. Uh, he got banged up in the second half. We'll have an update uh, on him, I'm sure, soon. Rebounds-wise, Heat had one more rebound, 35-34. Celtics shot 51.9% from the floor. The Heat shot 54.1. Heat from three-point range, uh, that was certainly a difference in this game. 16 of 31 from three-point range, the Celtics were just 10 of 29, 34.5% from three-point range for Boston. Uh, Jason Tatum, he had 30 points, uh, 11 of 11 from the free throw line, 9 of 17 from the field, 41 minutes tonight for Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown, he had 22 points, 9 rebounds, was 10 of 21 from the floor. Malcolm Brogdon off the bench. He had 19 points, 7 of 14 shooting, 2 of 4 from three-point range. Two rebounds tonight for the 2023 NBA Sixth Man of the Year. But this is just not a game you could lose if you're Boston. Uh, and I get it. You know, you were in this position last series, and, and you still came out on top, losing game one, eventually winning in seven games. And I'll get into more thoughts on that in a second. But I need to rant here for a second. If you were watching our live stream tonight, I kept screaming in the second half, give Jason Tatum the ball. Jason Tatum at halftime had 18 points. This, of course, comes after the best five-quarter stretch we've ever seen in NBA history, dating back to game six of the Eastern Conference semifinals. And then, of course, he drops 51 points in, the, uh, in game seven. So he had a five-quarter stretch where he had 67 points. He came out hot. Had 18 points at halftime of this game. Would you like to guess how many shots that Jason Tatum took in the second half of this game? Four! He took four shots in this game. One of the best players in the league, the best player in the series, took four shots in the second half. That is unacceptable. You should have put the ball in Jason Tatum's hands more in this game. Still a good stat line from JT. 11 of 11 from the line. 30.7 rebounds, but I feel like that is a reason Miami went on a run in the third quarter. In fact, in the third quarter, the Heat outscored the Celtics 46 to 25. How do you allow a team to score 46 points in a quarter? And this, of course, comes after the Celtics were awesome defensively in the last two games against Philly. They allow 86 points in Game 6 against the 76ers, and they allow 88 points in Game 7. But you allow 123 points tonight, including 46 in one quarter. It just can't happen. What's your one-word reaction to this loss? Let me know down in the comments section. Celtics fans, how are you feeling after tonight's loss? Let me know down in the comments section. My one word is unacceptable. Uh, you're the better team in this series. You got to take game one at home. You got to take care of business at home. Now the Heat have all the momentum, and now all the pressure is on Boston going in to game two. Jalen Brown uh, was good. Uh, 22 points, nine rebounds, five assists. That's about what he's averaging in these playoffs. Could not make any threes, though. He made one three, but he wasn't, wasn't very good from three. One of six from three-point range tonight. Marcus Smart, he left the game. Uh, Nick Rolla point out it might have been a groin injury, Nick. Is that what you, you mentioned earlier? What would you say, sorry? Groin injury for Marcus Smart? It looked like a calf injury Calf injury, okay. Out, we'll keep you posted on that. 13 points, 11 assists tonight for Marcus. 10 of those 11 assists came in the first half. So Marcus Smart was on in the first half. Uh, might have suffered an injury. We'll keep you posted on that. I haven't really seen a whole lot on Marcus Smart since this game ended. We're filming this right after the game. Uh, but if we get an update on Marcus Smart, we're certainly going to let y'all know. Malcolm Brogdon, sixth man of the year, 19 points. Uh, he was good tonight. 
two rebounds and an assist. Got off to a really hot start in this game. Would have loved to have seen him shoot more threes in the second half. If you're all about the C's, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're going to be live again for game two. We're going to be live every game here during the Eastern Conference Finals. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are all about the Boston Celtics. We'll be live again with producer Nick Roloff uh, here on Friday night. Subscribe, turn on your notifications so you know when we go live. Talking about Big Al, he had seven points tonight, six rebounds, two assists. I also want to point out... Uh, that a big thing in this game that bothered me was the free throws. Uh, the Celtics tonight had seven missed free throws, 22 of 29 from the line. Shot 75.9% from the line. You know, you just, you can't, you can't miss free throws. There's too many missed free throws tonight. Brogdon missed a couple. Uh, you just can't have that happen. You lose the game by seven, you miss seven free throws. It was certainly a difference in tonight's game. Robert Williams was great, man. A lot of energy right away from him. I love having him in the starting lineup. 14.7 rebounds. He did not miss a shot with six of six from the field tonight was Robert Williams. Rebounds, uh, I mean, pretty even there uh, in terms of team rebounds. The Heat had 35. The Celtics had 34 as a team tonight. Uh, I thought Williams had a good game. I really like, again, Williams starting instead of Derek White here. I like White coming off the bench. I said if you want to win this series, you got to contain Jimmy Butler. Uh, you didn't do that tonight, especially in the second half. 35 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists for Butler. Uh, man, just from the mid-range, he was lethal. Uh, just devastating mid-range jump shot. Bam was good. I was worried about this matchup coming in. He had 20 points, 8 rebounds tonight, was 9 of 13 from the floor. And then Max Struess, Nick Roloff kept yelling, the Struess is loose because he had that big stretch in the third quarter where he couldn't miss. He ended the game 15 points, 3 rebounds, 6 of 10 from the floor. Kyle Lowry in the first half looked like Toronto Kyle Lowry. I mean, that just can't happen. 15 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists tonight for Lowry. Caleb Martin also really good. 15 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists for Martin. He was 3 of 7 from 3-point range, 6 of 11 from the floor. Joe Mazzulla, I'm watching his press conference right now. He was out coached in this basketball game. And when you're looking at these two teams on paper, the Celtics have the better roster. Uh, but the biggest disparity, in my opinion, is the coaching matchup. I'm not saying Joe's not a good coach. I think Joe's a good coach. I like Joe. I think he's the guy going forward. But Eric Spolster is one of the best coaches, most experienced coaches in the league. And uh, he certainly outcoached Missoula here in the second half. Can the Celtics still win the series? Let me know down in the comment section who wins this series. Type H for the Heat or C for the Celtics. Look, I'm going to say this. And Heat fans that are freaking out right now, let me just remind you all that the Heat lost game one. The Heat won game one last year, right? You come back and you win that series in seven games. Also, don't forget <laughs> Don't forget what happened last series. You lose game one at home in Boston without Joel Embiid. Philadelphia didn't have Joel Embiid. That made it even worse. And you still come back and win that series. So don't count out Boston. I still believe Boston is going to win the series. Coming in, I thought this was going to be a lengthy series. I still feel that way. Uh, but Boston can still win the series. There's no question about that. But all the pressure is on Boston here going in to game two. I'm on Twitter at WillScott44. Be sure to give me a shout there if you have any questions. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. We are going to be live on Friday night. Looking forward to seeing you all again. They're going live around probably 8, 10 Eastern time, about 20 minutes before tip. We'll see you there.